In this session of TS Academy, we'll discuss basic practices of crop production for class 8. Now, basic steps that are followed by the farmer for agricultural practices are preparation of soil, sowing, adding manure and fat fertilizer, irrigation, protecting the, from the weeds, harvesting and storage. Step 1 is preparation of the soil. This is done by tilling or plowing, which is a process of turning and loosening of the soil. It allows the root to breathe easily and penetrate deep into the soil. And it also helps in the growth of earthworms and microbes which are present in the soil and are farmers' friend as they further turn and loosen the soil and add humus to it. Since only a few centimeters of the top layer of the soil supports plant growth, turning and loosening of soil brings nutrient-rich soil to the top of the plant that can be used for the nutrients. Now, what are the tools that are used for preparation of the soil? First tool is the plow. This is made of wood and is drawn by a pair of bull or other animals. It contains a strong triangular iron strip, which you can see in the figure, which is known as plow share. The main part of the plow is a long log of wood, which is called paw shaft. Next tool is hoe, which is a simple tool which is used for removing weeds and for loosening the soil. It has a long rod of wood or iron. A strong, broad and bent plate of iron is fixed to one of its ends, which works like a blade. It is pulled by the animals. Cultivator, it is a method in which plowing is done by tractor-driven cultivator. Next is sowing. Sowing is a process of planting seeds in the soil. The seeds selected for sowing should be of good quality, clean and healthy. Simple method of selecting good and healthy seeds. Put the seeds in the beaker. Pour water in it. The damaged seed become hollow and thus float on water. The healthy seeds rest at the bottom. So this is a good way of separating good healthy seeds from the damaged ones so that they can be used further for sowing. Now the question arises how sowing is done. The traditional tool which is shaped in form of a funnel is used for sowing the seed. The funnel in, is filled with the seed and is passed down through two or three pipes having sharp ends which pierce into the soil and place the seeds there. Seed drilling is used for sowing with the help of tractors. This sows the seeds uniformly at equal distance and depth. It ensures that seeds get covered by the soil after sowing. It protects seeds from being eaten by the birds. Few plants like paddy are first grown in a nursery. When they grow into a seedling, they are transplanted to the feed field manually. Some forest plants and flowering plants are also grown in the nursery. Third step is adding manure and fertilizer. First, we must understand what are manures and fertilizers. The substances which are added to the soil in form of nutrients for the healthy growth of the plant are called manure and a fertilizer. Now manure are basically natural minerals which are added to the soil. These are prepared through compost. Now fertilizers are chemical based. They are phosphatic, nitrogenous and potassium based fertilizers. Now, what is the difference between a manure and a fertilizer? Manure refers to a natural substance that is obtained from the decomposition of the waste of the plant and animals, such as cow dung, etc. Whereas, fertilizers are chemical substances which can be added to the soil to increase its nutrient content. Manure is prepared in the field, whereas fertilizers are prepared in factories. 
manures do not manures provide humus to the soil whereas fertilizers do not manure is relatively less rich in plant nutrient fertilizers on the other hand are rich in plant nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus and potassium manure is used to improve the texture of the soil as well as it increases the water retaining capacity of the soil it replenishes the soil with the nutrient whereas fertilizers make the soil less fertile and is a source of water pollution now what are the advantages of manure it enhances the water holding capacity or the water retention capacity of the soil it makes soil porous due to which exchange of gases becomes easier it increases the number of friendly microbes which helps in the replenishment of the soil naturally and it further improves the texture of the soil now what is crop rotation it refers to alternating cultivation of different crops in the same field in specified order to replenish soil nutrients for example farmers in northern india used to grow legumes as fodder in one season and wheat in the next season this helped in the replenishment of the soil with nitrogen such as rhizobium bacteria present in the nodules of the root of the leguminous plants helped in fixing atmospheric nitrogen step 4 irrigation irrigation can simply be defined as a process of supplying water to the crops at regular intervals the time and frequency of irrigation varies from crop to crop soil to soil and season to season sources of irrigation are wells tube wells ponds lakes rivers dams and canals the traditional method of irrigation use cattle and human as labor to bring water to the field like dekli chain pump moat which is a pulley system and rahat which is a liver system let's look at some of the modern methods of irrigation which help us to use water economically first one is a sprinkler system which is useful on the uneven land where sufficient water is not available but how sprinkler works the perpendicular pipes having rotating nozzles on the top are joined to the main pipeline at regular intervals when water is allowed to flow through the main pipe under pressure with the help of a pump it escapes from the rotating nozzle and gets sprinkled on the crop as if it's raining it is generally useful for lawns coffee plantation and several other crops other system is a drip system which is generally used in an area where where there is a desert or where there is lack of water in this system the water falls drop by drop directly near the root it is the best technique of watering fruit plants gardens and trees water is not wasted at all it is boon in region where availability of water is poor fifth step is protection from the weed weeds are defined as undesirable plants which may grow naturally along with the crop it is important to remove them because they compete with the crop plants for water nutrients space and light and this affects the growth of the crop some weeds interfere even in the harvesting and may be poisonous for animals and human beings some examples of common weeds are poison sumac carb grass joint ragweed etc now methods of removing weed first is tilling so before sowing the crop it helps in uprooting and killing the weeds which may then dry up and get mixed with the soil the best time for removal of the weeds is just before they produce flower and seed next is manual removal it includes 
physical removal of weeds by uprooting or cutting them close to the ground from time to time. This is done with the help of khurpi. Weedicides are sprayed in the fields to kill the weeds and do not damage the crops. They are diluted with water and sprayed in the fields with the sprayer. Example is 2,4-D. Farmers should cover their nose and mouth with a piece of cloth during the spraying of these chemicals as it can be hazardous to their health. Seed drill. It is also used to uproot the weeds. Sixth step is harvesting. Harvesting simply means cutting of crops after it has matured. Now what is done in harvesting? In harvesting, crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground. How long does it take for a crop to harvest? It usually takes three to four months for a crop to mature. Harvesting in our country is either done manually by sickle or by a machine called harvester. Methods of harvesting. Threshing. It refers to removing grain seeds from the shaft in the harvest crop. It is carried out with the help of a machine called combine which is in fact a harvester as well as a thresher. Winnowing is the other method that farmers with small holdings of land use to separate grain from the chaff. Last step is storage. Storage simply means keeping harvested crops safe and free from moisture, insects, rats and microorganisms if they are to be kept for longer time. How grains are stored? They are stored by properly drying and storing freshly harvested crops to prevent them from getting spoiled or attacked by organisms, making them unfit for use or for germination. Farmers generally store grains in jute bags or metallic bins. Silos and graineers are used for large scale storage of grains to protect them from pests like rats and insects. Dried neem leaves are used for storing food grains at home. When animals are raised at a large scale for meat, milk, eggs, etc., it is called animal husbandry. Thank you.